Hi everyone, it's Miss Tina here to talk uh, more about our, um, our focus theme this month and next month. Hope you all are having a great summer so far. Um, so what we are going to do is talk more about the man named Saul, also called Paul, uh, as we talked about last week. Uh, we're going to continue on with his story today. And this is from Acts chapter 9, verses 10 through 31, specifically when Ananias helps Saul. So we are going to be taking a closer look to see what it means to have faith, which faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And sometimes it takes a little bit more focus. We have to kind of take a closer look, you know, look closer like that and uh, see what we can see um, just in case we miss something. And then sometimes you just have to trust what you can't see. And our story today has a lot to do with this. And um, we're going to actually play a game in which I, it's kind of a, a quiz game, but uh, I think it will be fun. So um, the story sort of, well, well, we'll go with what, what we learned about last week. Um, he, Saul was a religious leader, uh, but not a fan of Jesus or his followers, basically. He didn't believe what Jesus was um, preaching. He didn't believe he was a son of God. And he made it his mission after Jesus died, rose again, and went to heaven to uh, hunt down and um, capture uh, his followers. So one day, Saul and a few of his men had been heading to Damascus to uh, hunt down more of Jesus's followers. And um, Jesus himself appeared to him on the way in a big flash of blinding light. And it, it actually blinded Saul, if you remember. And he told him to continue his journey into Damascus, but he would be told what to do next when he got there. And he needed to go to a man named Judas on Straight, uh, Straight Street. So, um, Meanwhile, there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. God called out to Ananias in a vision, and he said, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. In a vision, Saul has seen a man come and place his hands on him. That man's name is Ananias. In the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. So in short, God was telling Ananias to go to, to go to Saul, put his hands on him, and heal him. Um, but Ananias knew all about Saul, and he uh, probably was a little afraid of him. Um, and he said to the Lord, he said, Lord, I have heard many reports about this man. They say he has done great harm to your holy people in Jerusalem, and now he has come here to arrest all those who worship you. The chief priests have given him authority to do this. And uh, obviously he wasn't so sure about this idea, but God went on to explain. He said, go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. And so this brings us to our first question. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you the multiple choice um, questions and then you can pause me, talk it over with your family, and then unpause me to hear the answer. And I apologize in advance for the really poor quality of the ink <laughs> lesson. Do not buy cheap ink on Amazon. I learned that today. Okay, so first question is, did Ananias Tell God to his vision was wrong. B, um, excuse me. A, tell God his vision was wrong. B, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Or C, go to the house of Judas on Crooked Street. So go ahead and pause me. And then when you come back, I will give you the answer. Okay. And so if you voted B, you're right. He obeyed God and went to find Saul at Judas's house on Straight Street. Even though God had told Ananias how he planned to use Saul to share his love with others, Ananias must have been afraid. But despite that, he did what God had said. He went to the house and found Saul. Now, Saul hadn't been eating or drinking anything for three days, and he still couldn't see. 
Ananias placed his hands on Saul and told him why he had come. And he said, Brother Saul, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what happens next? Did Saul, here we go, another question. Did Saul, A, get mad at Ananias, B, take a nap, or C, get his sight back? So go ahead and discuss, pause me, and when you get back, I'll tell you the answer. Okay, and so the answer is C, get his sight back, in case you were wondering. <clears throat> and as soon as Ananias placed his hands on Saul, something like scales dropped from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and he was baptized. So now, before he met Jesus on, on the road to Damascus, he'd done everything he could to wipe out his followers. But now that he had met Jesus, Saul was equally determined and passionate um, to share the good news. So within days of meeting Jesus and being blinded, then healed, he began preaching in Jewish synagogues. He taught that Jesus is the Son of God, and everyone who heard him was amazed because... Uh, <laughs> It was a total turnaround. They couldn't believe it. So some of the questions they asked is, isn't he the man who caused great trouble in Jerusalem? Didn't he make trouble for those who worship Jesus? Hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? But day by day, Saul continued to share the message of Jesus with more and more people, and many of them began to believe. But there were also many, including the governor of Damascus, who were upset by Saul's mission. They made plans to capture and kill Saul, but Saul's friends made a plan to help him escape. And I think you know what's coming. We have another question. So here we go. Did Saul's followers A, help, uh, sorry, did Saul's followers help him escape A, on a camel, B, in a spaceship, or C, in a basket? So go ahead and talk that over and uh, just get back to me when you're ready. Okay, so uh, believe it or not, he uh, the answer was C, in a basket. So what they did was uh, they helped him escape at night by lowering him in a basket um, through an opening in the city wall. And so after he escaped from Damascus, Damascus he ended up back in Jerusalem and he tried to join the believers there, but they were afraid of him. They knew he had tried to stop the Jesus followers before. However, one man, Barnabas, had already heard Saul's story, so he took Saul to visit Peter, James, and the other leaders of the early church, and, the, and he told them the whole story. <clears throat> and so this brings us to our final question. What happened next? Did the believers welcome Saul to stay with them? A, B, kick him out, or C, run away screaming? I'll go ahead and talk that over and get back to me when you're ready. Okay, so if you voted A, that's correct. They decided to um, help him and allow him to stay. So thanks to Barnabas, they could see that Saul was telling the truth. And um, so he began to preach just as boldly as he had in Damascus. And once again, a group of religious leaders became upset with him. But once again, the believers helped Saul escape. And this time he traveled back to his hometown of Tarsus to wait for God's next directions for him. So basically, even though it was dangerous for Saul and the other believers, they continued to share what Jesus had done in their lives. The number of believers across Judea and Samaria continued to grow through the power of God's Spirit. God gave them the courage they needed to share his truth. And God can give you courage too. In fact, knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. So um, let's say a, a little prayer and then you can uh, go about your week and think about all in the ways in which you can be courageous and face your fears and know God just a little bit more. Okay, pray with me, please. Dear God, 
Thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior. We want to know Jesus better for so many reasons. Knowing him makes us brave. Please help us face our fears, whether we're afraid to do the right thing, like stand up for someone who needs our help, or to share your love with others. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, and also, uh, there will be some activities on uh, the uh, FCCRO Kids Facebook page uh, in addition to this. So, if you'd like to do some more things, you're welcome to, and we'll see you all next week. Bye.